Morning, I'm Rory and welcome back to Sawyer Academy. In this video, we are talking about BOF or best opening face. As far as where do you start sawing a log, you have two main options. In the previous video, we covered MOF. In this video, we're covering BOF. With MOF, all we considered was what is the smallest product we want to make and we're going to cut from the outside in of our log and kind of end up wherever. With BOF, we are going to consider the entire log all at once and figure out kind of where we're going to end with that log and work backwards to where we're going to start with that log. So we're not starting in a random place. Now BOF is best utilized in conjunction with a 3D scanner or if you had a 3D scanner, you would be running BOF all of the time. Now a, what a 3D scanner does is going to scan all the sides of, of a log. Uh, I'll say all at once or, or within a second. It's going to take a bunch of pictures of the log and it's going to build a computer simulation based on parameters you give the computer and it's going to find out what's the best thing I can do with this log. Best being what's the most money I can get out of the log. And as far as most money, that's in terms of the dollar sign we assign to our products. So in this list behind me here, we have random products with uh, certain numbers or certain dollar values. Now those dollar values come from what is, what is your company currently selling those products for it per thousand. So just a quick example, one by three for $250. That means one by three is being sold $250 per thousand feet. So it's 25 cents a board foot. But like I touched on before, even if you don't have a 3D scanner, you can still use BOF. So uh, for two examples, the first being a 2D scanner can kind of work as a 3D scanner. And usually you are able to set up in the computer some kind of BOF. So you might set up dollar, dollar values, you might set up priorities, you might prioritize uh, wider products over narrower products. Your computer program is going to kind of vary a little bit. As well, you don't need a scanner at all to use BOF, and we'll get into this later, um, as long as you know your numbers. So as long as you know, if I want to end up at this dimension, I need to start at this dimension, and then you're going to be working backwards to end up to end up ending at a known dimension and we'll cover that later but to start with today let's consider uh, a face one log with a 3d scanner so we take our log we pass it through a 3d scanner once the log is scanned the computer is going to optimize that log and try a bunch of different solutions for that log it might be a hundred solutions it might be 200 solutions it's going to depend on the power of the computer or how powerful the computer is um, based on the parameters that we get it, give it not only the dollar signs, but all the other weighing tolerances and every other uh, factor we want the computer to consider. It's going to try, in this case, it's going to try three different solutions, A, B, or C. Now what it's going to do is try to literally fit all these different products inside this cylinder in the computer and it's going to spit out a dollar amount to that. So option A is going to be a bunch of four quarter lumber that's going to be worth $22.50. Option B is going to be a four by four out of the heart with some four quarter boards uh, off the outside. And that's going to be worth $18.75. The last option is going to be one six by six. So four cuts, four slabs, one six by six, and that's going to be worth $25. All of these numbers, totally theoretical. I don't actually know what they're going to work out for. But in this case, this right here, this might be more volume as far as footage. So this, this, all these boards together might add up to equal more footage than one six by six. But this one six by six is going to be worth more dollars than any other solution. So this is the solution that the computer is going to pick, which is then going to apply, uh, everything downstream so all the cutting tools and all the however your mill turns logs into lumber and timbers 
it's going to set all those up. So between these two examples, these are kind of the two extremes. This is our best dollar amount. This is going to be our best volume of lumber. So this will be less volume, more money. So we're going to have more waste. So and so chips do sell for money. So there is a, other factors involved. But for today, all we're talking about is best opening face. So all different solutions. In this case, solution C is going to be our best option. So if we wanted to cut option C, where is our first cut going to be? And if this is face one, our first cut is going to be right there. And that's what BO, that's the essence of what BOF is. This is our best solution. We consider the entire log at the start. So where do we start cutting? This cut that we made on face one is going to say, let's say it's going to be half an inch deeper into the log than what our MOF would have been. So if we would have started our MOF uh, lighter, we would have had to make a second cut, take a board. And what we're left with is not enough to get a six by six out of, which would have ended up with a solution similar to B, let's say. So that's what BOF is. We're taking a log, we're scanning it, we're looking at every possible solution that we could do with that log, find out which one is worth the most money and not what is the worst, what, what we can get the most uh, footage out of because that's not a factor. If this is the best footage, this is the best money. And in our case, we're running a 3D optimizer with a BOF. So we're going with option C. And then based on what cutting tools you have, and what I mean by that is kind of, are you in a scrag mill, are you in a band mill? Kind of what setup are you? Um, generally, you're gonna scan the log once on phase one, you're gonna do all this, and you're not gonna scan the log again. You're not gonna scan the log on phase two, three, or four. You scan it once, and this solution just happens. The same with if any solution is picked, that it just happens. Um, with MOF, we we usually we're going to scan it on phase one and phase three. Um, with BOF, generally you're just scanning phase one, and phase two, three, four just kind of happen. Now, depending on your setup, you could scan again on phase three. You could scan your cant if you have a scanner that's able to do that or you have a second scanner that does that in which I've also seen. So now once the log is turned into a cant, you have a better idea of what you can actually get out of that cant where on phase one with a log, you are kind of taking a very good education, ed educational guess as to what you can get out of that. But once it's turned into a cant, you have a much clearer picture of what you're actually going to do with that cant. So, depending on what setup you have, you're either going to scan it once on phase one and then not touch the log again, or you could scan it again on phase three uh, when you're at your cant size, but you're not going to scan it on phase two. Phase two and phase four with a BOF is your kind of, or the 3D scanner and a BOF setup, you're just, it's just happening. Whatever it is, it's just, it's just that this phase one, phase two, it just, it is what it is. Now, if we go back to videos when we talked about kind of when we want to use BOF versus MOF. One of the options was on phase one, we can use our MOF. And then on phase two, we can use our BOF. And this is what I like to use. This is my sweet spot based on the uh, technology and the equipment that's available to me when I'm sawing. So what I like about using MOF on phase one is I can make as many cuts as I feel comfortable with or as many as I want to make. And what the main factor for me is going to be is cutting select lumber. So the, the species of log that I usually cut has select lumber in the sapwood off uh, on the sides of the log is going to be the best dollar amount or the best value of lumber. So I want to make sure that I cut all of it off before I kind of get into the heart. Um, so this is going to be an example of a log. So on phase one, I'm going to make one, two, three cuts. My first cut, I take off my slab. My second cut, I make a board and that board is going to be the same size or slightly larger than my MOF, which if we remember back was a one by three, six foot. 
So this board is going to be the same or slightly larger than my MOF. I make a second cut, so I make two boards now. Those boards go downstream. Now the face of my log at the end of my first face is now no longer select. So I took two boards, both of those boards were select, and now I'm getting into common grade lumber, which I don't want to cut into anymore. I want to leave this as wide as possible because usually uh, wider products are worth more than narrower products. Not always, but that's kind of a rule that I go by. Make, make as wide of things as you can, as many things as you can. Um, so now we're on phase two. So on phase one, we took off two boards. And if I were to use MOF again on phase two, we ended up with an indeterminate cant. Now I don't want to end up with an indeterminate cant and I don't want to have to cut a shim to make a determinate cant. So I want to do, and I touched on this before, is use a BOF. Uh, now I don't have a 3D scanner, but I'm still gonna use a BOF based on my experience and doing what I've called knowing your numbers. So once I'm done with this, I need to know, and I will know because I have a digital readout, you might have a mechanical readout, you might need to use a tape measure depending on what you're doing. I need to know how much material I have left here. And in this uh, example, we're going to call it from this flat face to this outer face, we're going to call it 11 inches of material that I have left. Okay, so what can I do with 11 inches wide? I can't make a 12 inch cant. I can just barely make a 10 inch cant and I can very comfortably make an eight, six or four inch cant. Now, what is my best option for that? And that'll come down to, again, we don't have dollar signs or dollar amounts assigned to products anymore in this case, because we don't have a 3D scanner. We're not using that kind of software. We're not, we don't have that technology. But knowing about it, we can still kind of emulate it. So in this, this example, we're on phase two, we have 11 inches left, and really we have four options, 10 inch, eight inch, six inch, four inch. What is the best option for us in this current scenario? So regardless, at this point, it's really regardless of uh, scanner. We're not really talking about scanner. And we, so we know we don't use an MOF because of indeterminate can size. We want to end up with a determinate can size so based on that, we have 11 inches left, we can't do 12, we can do 10, we can do eight, we can do six, and we can do four. And really at this size, we're not really gonna consider four. So let's look at what our options can be. So with 10 inches, all I'm doing is cutting about an inch off the log. I won't get any board out of it because it's too small. And now I'm gonna be left with, I call this an unbalanced heart. So I've taken two boards off this side two boards and a slab off, off this side. And off phase two, I'm taking no boards and a small slab. So now our, our cant that we're gonna be ended up with is gonna be not only unbalanced, uh, we're gonna be leaving select lumber on this face. So if we remember back to phase one, it took us two boards to remove the select lumber to get into common grade. On phase two, I'm gonna go into phase two assuming I'm going to be taking off two boards because usually, and not always, but usually logs uh, are fairly symmetrical as far as grade. That will change based on where trees grow and where the limbs grow on logs based on where the sun is. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, but I go, in, I go into cutting, sawing every log thinking that however many boards I've cut off a face, I will cut the same number of boards off the adjacent face. And that usually only varies, might vary by one or two boards. So if I cut two boards off this face, I'm going into this assuming I'm going to cut also two boards. That may be one board, that may be three boards. It'll depend once we're kind of there. Um, so first option, not great. Second option, pretty good. Third option, if we want to go to six inch with 11 inches left, that's going to be to get a six inch cant. That's going to be four boards 
and a slab. What I don't like about this, and even if we were trying to target, uh, let's say at this point in time, the company that I'm sawing for wants to target as much six inches possible, uh, six inches flying off the shelves, we can sell as much of it as we want. What I don't like about this option is all of these edging boards. If you start going down this rabbit hole of trying to get to certain cant sizes, you will swamp the edger, the machine that's turning these live edged boards into dimension number. You will literally swamp him and you, you basically create a bottleneck in the mill where if you were to do this enough times, you have to stop and wait for them to catch up before you can start that process over. Uh, so in this scenario, in this case, based off, okay, two boards off this face, I'm probably ending up with a two-ish boards off this face. What are my best options? I would say for face two, my best opening face is gonna be this solution. I wanna go into it knowing at 11 inches left, I'm going for an eight inch can because an eight inch can is gonna give me two boards uh, and I'm not gonna be left with an unbalanced heart and I'm not gonna be sending too many boards to my edger, especially when these are not gonna be select. If the first two boards come off select and your third, fourth, however many boards are then not select, you're swamping them for no real reason. Um, so in this example, we're not even considering a scanner, we're just on phase two, we know our numbers that when we have 11 inches left, we can't do 12. We can do 10, eight, six. This option, this solution is gonna be our best solution. So knowing that, knowing we wanna end up at eight inches, nine inches, 10 inches, with 11 inches left, our first cut is gonna be at 10 inches. Now I'm kinda of glossing over the fact that uh, we might be sawing inch and an eighth and then you have your kerf. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't always work out to be perfectly whole numbers. I'm just kind of using perfectly whole numbers. So I know if I want to end up with eight, I want to end up with a determinate cant at 11 inches. I want to come out eight inches, nine inches for the first board, 10 inches for the second board. And then my slab is kind of just whatever, however thick that is. Now that's again, not considering MOF. Um, I just know my numbers and I know that this second consecutive cut, this board is going to be quite a bit bigger than my MOF. So if our MOF set at a one by three, six feet long, this board might be one by six, 10 feet long or 12 feet long. Um, so that's what I mean by using a BOF on phase two or phase four. Uh, without a scanner. I just know my numbers. I know what my options are and going into it based on what I did on phase one I know generally what I want to do on phase two uh, So I know what my options are and what my best option is which then translates to where do I start cutting on my second face? And I so I'm not starting in a random spot I'm starting at a spot that I know when I start here two more cuts I'm going to end up with an eight inch cant. So that's what I mean by that's my best option. And that's where my best opening face is going to be. Now I just want to touch briefly on something I've mentioned before is using BOF with a two dimensional scanner. Uh, BOF is best used with three dimensional scanners. It's quick. It's easy. It's reliable. It works. Uh, my experience and yours might be completely different, but my experience is, trying to use BOF with parameters and dollar signs and all of that uh, software on the soft so software side of it with a 2D scanner is very inconsistent to the point where I wouldn't recommend it at all. It, it, it's good in the sense of if you're starting out, uh, it gives you a good, it can give you a good place to start. If you're just looking at a log and you say, I have no idea what I should be doing with this log, a BOF and a 2D scanner gives you a jumping off point. It might say, hey, try this or do this. And then 
Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't work out, but at least it's somewhere to start if you have no clue what you should be doing with that log that you're currently trying to saw. Now why that is, is how a 2D scanner works. Where a 3D scanner has, let's say four or six cameras that scans the entire uh, diameter of the log all at once, a 2D scanner uh, comes down from the ceiling and looks at this point on the log, uh, and there there'll be there'll be dozens, maybe a hundred down the length of the log. They're spaced every three or six inches, let's say, two two to six inches apart down the length of your saw line. Now that's going to give a numerical readout of let's say whatever on this log. Now it will know. Now the computer will know uh, where, how far above your rails that is. Let's call that X and how far away from your head blocks that is, and that's Y. So it it kind of knows where, based on that reading, where it is on the log, and then it kind of guesses that that slice. So every three inches, let's say, down the length of the log, it's going to, I assume, predict what a perfect circle the log is at that instance and then puts all those together for the, let's say 16 feet of the log, and then comes up with a similar similar solution that we look, looked at in the past. The problem is it's only, it's guessing as to what everything else is. It knows what it is right here and it's guessing what it is kind of back here. So when we're talking log, if you wanna do this, logger orientation is paramount because if your sweep is the wrong way, and your log, let's say, isn't touching the head blocks back here because it's swept away from the head blocks towards the saw. The computer is guessing and it thinks there's there's material, there's there's log there, there's lumber there, when there's no there's nothing there because it's swept away. Uh, and that's kind of the situations I run into is trying, I have tried to use BOF and a 2D scanner and it's just inconsistent to the point where uh, it's not great to use because it's wrong so often. It might give you a solution, say, hey, cut an eight inch cant out of this log with you know, two sideboards off phase one, two sideboards off phase two. When you get to phase two, there's no two sideboards to be taken. Now you're left with an eight inch cant that's totally unbalanced and maybe you just kind of touch the side, you know, touch phase two with the saw and it didn't really make a good cant. Now you don't know what to do. It's just inconsistent to the point where I wouldn't recommend it. That's just my experience. Your experience might be completely different. Like if, if you have a computer setup that it just works every time, great, use it. Um, but for me, it's just, it's, I don't know if it's the technology is just not there or just the ones I've used aren't set up correctly. It might be a me thing, I don't know. Um, but as far as using a BOF with a 2D scanner, you can use it if it's set up well, and it, but it's really only it's really only a good option as far as starting out sawing. If, like I said, you, you don't really know what you should be cutting out of it, it kind of it'll just throw you a solution, and you might, yeah, that's a good solution, or no, nah, I don't really want to do that. But it, it's at least it's a jumping off point for you if it's set up correctly. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is using BOF when you have no scanners whatsoever. Scanners aren't in, in, are in the picture. So this might be, uh, we'll talk about this in the context of a portable sawmill. So with a portable sawmill, again, you basically have three options as far as where do you start cutting this log. The first option is you kind of just guess, you eyeball it and you push the saw through and you're kind of left with whatever you're left with. The second option is your MOF. You kind of, you know, tape measure thing, plan, Okay, my first board, I want to be a minimum of this wide and at least this long. But with BOF, what we can do is we're standing here at this log and this, I'm going to use a real world example of something that, that I've done uh, previously is I was cutting larger diameter spruce and out of this spruce log, I wanted to cut as many I'll, I'll call it two by six, inch and a half by six inches wide. I wanted to cut as many as I could out of this. So what I had to do was 
uh, literally sit down and draw on the small end diameter of the log how many two by six I could get and where I was going to get them from. Now you, you'll see videos of this all the time at, uh, with like six by six. Like if, so if this was a smaller diameter log and you wanted to get one six by six out of there, you make a, you make a plywood template of a six by six, put it on there, trace it. And those four lines on that six by six are going to be your best opening face in the context of, I want a six by six. Where do I start sawing to get a six by six? Well, if you didn't use that plywood template and you were guessing, you might either take too little, take too much. And if you, once you take too much, there's no going back. You can't make something that's not there. Um, so the best option in that scenario is to follow your lines. So in my example of what I did was I sat literally just sat on the ground and drew out on the end of the log with, I forget what I used, probably uh, either chalk or a lumber crayon. Uh, kind of like, et cetera, et cetera. And <laughs> just kept going. Accounting for my kerf, because obviously your kerf is gonna play a factor into how much you're actually gonna get out of it. Sat there and drew all of my two by six, I'll call them two by six. Uh, all of my two by six that I wanted to get out of the spruce log, I didn't want four quarter, I didn't want four by four, I didn't want all that other stuff. I only wanted two by six and I wanted as many as I could. So you might sit there and I, I'm pretty sure I started over a couple of times, either cut it off with a, you know, graze it with a chainsaw to clean it up a little bit, plan it out. Okay, I want, if I have two logs, I want 30 pieces. So I want 15 out of each or however many sit there plan it out okay once you kind of have it planned out where do i start cutting well my first cut is going to be right along my first line and on my second second face right along the line third face and then whether or not you go to your fourth face is up to you and how yours is set up but so no scanner no mof I have, I have my solution planned out as to what I want out of this log. And on phase one, two, and three, my, these are my three cuts. I have them planned out. These are going to be my best opening face for this log on these three faces. And the best being no dollar signs. I'm not selling this. This is just what I want out of it. I don't want the most lumber. If I wanted more lumber, I could, I'd probably go to four quarter and try to get as many four quarters best for me in this scenario is as many as possible which I sat down and planned out similarly to what the computer in the first example what the computer does in you know one second I'm sitting there on the ground planning this out because I only have two logs and I need 30 pieces of this so these three faces where I'm starting I know where I'm gonna end up I know what I'm gonna end up with so this is the best for me in this scenario with this log the best option so my best opening face but that's about it and thanks for watching